Hi, I'm Eric with Narrow Road Van Conversions. One of the most common questions I get is, what would you put in your van? Well, why don't you come on in and have a look around. So we're starting to offer standard vans for sale. One of the biggest barriers we've had is the ability to get a van and to bring it in, have it custom made. We've kind of arrived at a standard layout that seems to work best. So here it is. Uh, we're gonna call this one N3 because it's a three seater. Um, so this will be a standard model. Uh, we'll also have the N2, which will be a two-seater. So you can see here, looking in at the two-seater, sorry for the mess, this one's under construction. You have a lot more cabinet space and drawer space below it with a little bit of storage space below and the spot when you spin this chair around to be able to set your drink down and to have some storage in here. So a lot more storage in the two-seater. Uh, this one also has a headliner shelf built into it for some extra storage. So this one will be available also soon. Be sure to call on availability. We might have one available for you now. Hopefully we can offer these up as a standard van for people to purchase them so they don't have to wait so long to have a custom build made if they're looking to have a van right away. There are a lot of differences between the vans that you can buy off the lot and one of our standard vans. And the main thing is just ease of use. Most people find these much more easy to use. You get there, you don't need to set up as much. Everything's self-contained and ready to go. We have a lot of batteries on board and the alternator charges the batteries. So lots of power here to run everything you'd need to run. We've got a TV here that can be rotated to sit and watch on the bed or it can be rotated forward to watch from up here from the two swivel seats. A number of our customers who have built custom have went with us because there's just too many bells and whistles on these vans that you buy off the lot, the black water tanks, the setup, the uh, difficulty to drive, the generators, uh, just too much to learn, too much to know. We love the slogan of Battleborn Batteries, get out there and stay out there. So that's our model two, don't need to be plugged in. Get out and enjoy. Well, I've had the opportunity to travel in a lot of different vans and with a lot of different features. And one of the things I've kind of learned is that keeping it simple is really sometimes the best. Uh, one of the things you'll see here is there's no oven or cooktop. And this is a great example of something where simplicity just kind of rules. One of the things that I do every morning is I get up and I'll make some coffee. I put the cooktop together. I'll put a link in the description below to this. And uh, boil my water here and make my coffee here. You could have a couple of them if you wanted to have a couple of pans going at once. And then when you're done, you take it apart. You put it back in its drawer. And it's gone. If it's a nice day, you can cook outside. So it's very versatile. Also, instead of having an oven, I find it much easier to just pull out the toaster oven. Another big thing that I learned is toilets. No matter what happens with the toilet, you gotta deal with it sooner or later. Anybody who's had an RV with a black water tank has known the awfulness of dealing with that. What I've come to the conclusion of for me is the best solution is this hand-built toilet that we make with a urine bottle on the bottom of it. So it's got a removable urine bottle down there and it's a urine diverting toilet. And then in the back, I've got a one gallon bucket with a Ziploc there. And on the rare occasions that we need it, we just go uh, number two in the bucket and you zip the Ziploc bag and you dispose of it. But what ends up happening is you just don't need it that often. The number two part of it, the number one part of it, quite often. In this two gallon jug here, we end up having to empty every day. So 
a lot of the customers I have that come back and I talk to them, talk about they just don't use the composting part of their toilet much. The fan's constantly running. Sometimes different air pressures will cause some smells in the van. And this is just a great compromise between the two options that I've had, between the hand-built toilet and a composting toilet. So this is kind of the hybrid that we've come up with. Uh, up in the shower, I put the shower handle up very high so when you're sitting, you don't have to hit your head on the shower handle. In the first van I had, I had these cabinet faces were what I call stacked wood. That is unavailable to us now, so I came up with this uh, mixture. And what it is, it's acacia frames with a birch center. And acacia is what this countertop is made out of. So the acacia has got a good variation between light and dark with it. So I kind of played off of that with the birch. Did the edges in the acacia and the centers in birch on that. I feel like that worked really nice. Here's all the cabinet faces on the passenger side. Um, the ceiling is a birch with the grooves in it. In here we've got a microwave, uh, a larger refrigerator. Uh, up ahead of that we've got a wardrobe. I'm debating about putting a pull-out pantry in here or keeping it open for all the window covers that go on all the windows because anybody who's spent a lot of time in a van knows it's hard to come up with a good solution on where you put all your window covers. You'll see here we've got a third seat with a seat belt. A outlet here, which I'll put a link in the description to that with USB-C and regular USB chargers in it and a cup holder. I really like this Mercedes van. It kind of has all the bells and whistles. It has power seats, heated seats, leather interior. Um, it's got the heated windshield, which I wasn't sure that I liked, but I actually like it living where, where I live. Uh, I've got a rear view mirror in here. That's a camera. I'll put a link in the description for that also. That really works nice. So here I've swiveled the seats around. One of the things I like about the power seats is the memory buttons. I can press one for the normal seating position, two puts it in a position that it swivels easily, and three puts it in the best position for sitting backwards. I know in previous builds we've had this flip up be adjustable. I personally like it to just be at the height that's perfect for the passenger seat. I figure if you're going to use it for extra counter space, it being a step down isn't that big of a deal. There's the light switch, that's on dimmers. I like that. We have the tip out here uh, for the easy access to the garbage. Uh, here we have our normal sink and water filter. The removable cutting board. We like the stepped upper cabinets for in the kitchen. Those are nice. So you can stand here and when you're making food, you can see the countertop. The Mercedes is a little bit narrower, so we sleep forward to backward in here. Uh, the distance that we have in this one is six foot four from the back window to the edge of the bed or the edge of the counter and five foot seven wide, uh, which is actually quite wide, but uh, we like the extra width. A couple of bunk windows in the back. Uh, one of the things I really like is the TV that we have in here. It's on a swivel. You can see it's built in and it fits right in with the upper cabinets in the back. Uh, the upper cabinets in the back are a new design with this van. I call it the aircraft overhead bins. They flip down on wires that hold them in position. So up here, uh, the plan with these overhead bins is that uh, when you're sleeping, you, know, you can sit up and not hit your heads. Or you can have this bed in the upright position where you're sitting facing forward and you could have these down. You could be sitting on your computer, link your computer into the TV and be working and kind of set things here uh, for some additional storage space. Uh, let me show you how the bed converts. That's a new design. I usually have the kick out legs, but what I found is with the kick out legs is you can't flip it up from inside. So this design I have here works great with these hooks. 
right here. Uh, it only works when you have cabinets on both sides, but here, let me flip it up. I can grab these loops on the side and I loop them over these hooks. All right. So now I'm sitting up in bed and we can sit and we can watch a movie here. On the screen. And you can set your drinks there or be on your computer and just kind of use it for some extra space. Here I am sitting in the upright position. Kind of nice we got the Roku hooked up to, to this TV so you can watch some movies if you got some internet. Let's put that back. And then I've got it to where it uh, tucks in here. Crows up there so it stays up in position it can also pivot around to face the front so you can sit in those front seats and watch tv from up there got a reading light up here in the back i also really like this skylight i've put this in other builds i really like that it has a screen and a sunshade and some LED lights around it. So I really like that. Here you can see we've got, this bed can hinge up and you can see how these loops just go up and hook around to hold the bed up. So I like that system a little bit better than the legs we have. However, we normally don't have the luxury of having bins on both sides. So it worked in this build, so I used it. In here you can see the electrical compartment We've got uh, the alternator charges the batteries here, and this is a 280 amp alternator charger with a second dedicated alternator. So it throws a lot of current back here. This van is totally self-sufficient. The main fuse is right next to that, and the master power is next to that, and the solar fuse is next to that. We've got the inverter, Wabasto fuses. The Wabasto is great, we love that. The air heater, that runs off the diesel in the tank. We've got the Max Air Fan remote here for the Max Air Fan. Moving forward, we've got the toilet paper holder. We've got under cabinet lights. Again, we've got this outlet insert here. One of the most efficient things here is the hot water heater. You waste a lot of energy heating water. Um, here is the electrical backup. So if you wanna waste energy and heat your water here, you can. Click that on and off if you've been sitting for too long. Let's see here. Well, we're currently drawing a positive 14 amps because the sun is really out and our solar is working great. If I turn that on, it goes to negative 52 amps. So it draws about 70 amps for that backup electric hot water heater to run. Turn that back off and we're back to gathering a charge here. Um, with some variable sunlight out here. Um, to the right of the battery monitor, we've got a front light. That thing's pretty awesome. When you're uh, in the dark looking for a spot to camp in the middle of nowhere, that's gonna really come in handy. Uh, we got a side light that is these strip lights underneath the awning. Those are gonna shine nicely at night out here in this area underneath the awning. It, they also shine when the awning's in, so that's kind of a nice little location for that. We've got a water gauge here um, that that turns that on and off. Gray water tank to drain the gray water and the countertop white under counter. Over here's the inverter remote switch. That's currently on and we've got a microwave which is nice, nice size refrigerator over here. You've probably seen this in some of our other builds. And then back full circle around to the reading light that's over our extra third seat. Chose not to put a headliner shelf in here. I don't like it because I come in and out a lot of the driver's area and I personally like the headroom better. Here's the seat that goes up to the bed. We also have a pullout counter for that, 
That's kind of nice. So you could sit there if you're eating. A third person, fourth person could sit there and just pull that out and eat or work a little workspace. In here we have dovetail drawers with our logo on the side of them. So those look really quite nice. Underneath the bench, we've got that storage uh, like we had in our first one that goes all the way back and underneath. Uh, love that for just throwing blankets in and stuffing them up and in there. Uh, it's just a great, efficient way to keep bulk items. Over here is the plumbing side, so if you need to access things in there, you could. Walking down to the outside, we've got an automatic step that's factory installed with the automatic door on the Mercedes. Out underneath, you can see a pass through here. It's a nice place for some flip flops. We've got a Fiamma F45S awning. You can see the light on the top of the van, that forward facing light that we were showing you. It's gonna be nice and bright. I plan on putting on a front hitch receptacle uh, for the winch uh, to go. I've got it all wired up for the winch to go in and the forward and the back. So you can pull yourself out like I explained in the last video. We've got the inlet for the shore power right there. Coming around to the back. Lots of storage here because like we said, we've got six foot four uh, from the front to the back. On the electrical side, uh, we've got a big space here uh, for some storage in there. We've got the fuse box that flips down for the DC and the AC fuses. A little hole here to access the inverter if you need to hit that switch in there. Lots of ventilation in the electrical compartment, both in and out along the bottom and the top so that uh, any heat in there gets dissipated nicely. Got a hose, leveling blocks, ladder, that little shelf that I talked about. Here's the drop down door in the plumbing area above the fresh water tank. Here's the hot water heater I've talked about before. And you got the rear shower or hose with hot and cold water. We've got the plumbing area here with the four different functions that can be used with this plumbing system using five valves. General use, uh, filling it, sucking from a bucket in city water. I've explained that before in other videos if you're interested. The engine's radiator heats the water, like I had said, and that comes up there through those tubes into the hot water heater. There's a little tube here that is a three quarter inch PEX tube, just empty sitting here, open. And what I did is I hooked that onto my Wabasto air heater. So anytime I have the air heater on, it's blowing some hot air into the water compartment and that's uh that's a game changer uh, i do a lot of cold camping i like to go ice fishing i like to take the van wherever i can and whenever the heater's on that little bit of air going in there is perfect amount to keep things from freezing in there because things can get pretty insulated on in the garage uh, underneath the bed got an outlet back here the switch for the water heater a 12 volt outlet i like that uh, for an air compressor if you have to fill up tires or anything there's a water inlet in the bottom we relocated the interior lights um, into the garage area so when you open the back doors that those go on automatically i set the ladder up let's go up top and take a look up here you can see we got a nice deck back here that's probably about four feet by four and a half feet enough for a lawn chair up there to sit up there if you want you can see in through the skylight here. You can see the three 175 watt solar panels, X Air fan, and the Fiamma. We have a custom roof rack on this one, which is lower profile than the other ones you've seen. Um, we're making them ourselves out of 8020 aluminum. That worked quite nice. They're super solid, really versatile, so you can put a lot of things up here. Well, thanks for coming along on this walkthrough with us. If you're interested in buying one of these vans or having a custom-built van done, email me in the link below and I'll be sure to get something out to you. Eric for Narrow Road Van Conversions, thanks for coming along and we'll see you next time.